Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! If the press is to be believed, Ruth Davidson here is popular in Scotland with the media and even with people who will probably never vote for her. She's gay, likes a drink, is a Christian, used to be a member of the TA and doesn't mind pulling a punch or two, so I won't mess with her. And it appears she is turning round the fortunes of the Scottish Tories. She doesn't expect to become First Minister in May when Scotland goes to the polls, but she does hope to come second. So does she have a chance? Here's our Adam. Forget the Six Nations, the other contest gripping Scotland is the battle between Labour and the Conservatives for second place in this summer's elections. Here's the Scottish Conservatives' game plan. Number one, suggest that Labour are so weak only they can oppose the SNP in the Scottish Parliament. Number two, talk up their charismatic leader Ruth Davidson. And number three, bring in a whole load of new candidates from unexpected backgrounds. All of this became clear when I went leafleting with a pair of first-time candidates. Adam Tompkins, a professor of constitutional law who helped come up with plans for more devolution, and Annie Wells, a manager at a famous department store known for its pants and quality food. No, not that one. When did you realise that you were a Conservative at heart? Late 30s. Um, I grew up in Springburn and it's a very Labour um, area. It always has been. It was very industrial. My dad worked in British Rail up there and it was just asking my dad um, why do we vote Labour and he said it's just what people like us do and I decided to go away and have a look at other parties and the aspiration side of things and the opportunity is what got me with the Scottish Conservatives and Conservatism. Now just listen to how they introduce themselves. Hi, could I give you a wee leaflet this morning for Ruth Davidson? We're campaigning on behalf of Ruth, Ruth Davidson, Scottish Conservatives in the parliamentary elections. Yes. It's all about Ruth Davidson. You only have to stand Ruth Davidson next to the Prime Minister or the Chancellor to see uh, that she's different. She's comp comprehensively educated rather than privately educated. She was not born with a silver spoon in her mouth. She's a working class, blue collar, aspirational Tory. So do you think George Osborne and David Cameron were born with silver spoons in their mouth? No, I don't think. I, <laughs> I, 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 think that, I think Ruth Davidson represents a sort of Scottish conservatism that is blue collar working as working class aspirational Toryism, which is much, you know, which is which is cutting through on the doorstep uh, uh, all, all of the time as we speak. Roots up against the other first ladies of Scottish politics. Nicola Sturgeon of the SNP, who wants another independence referendum, just not yet. And Labour's Kezia Dugdale, who's unveiled an eye catching pledge to put a penny on income tax in Scotland to pay for public services. And you know what? The Tories seem to be on to something. I wouldn't normally say this, but I think for the first time in my life I'm going to vote Conservative, which I never would have done in England. Really? Because of Ruth Davidson? Yeah, and because I think the Labour Party uh, aren't giving the SNP a proper opposition. Wow, it's like you have memorised the Scottish Conservative leaflets that no, well, some people have just been handing out here. No, I haven't read one. But are they in need of a reality check? We've been here before with the Scottish Conservatives, so in 2010 there were predictions in the party that they would get 10 or maybe 11 seats in the Westminster elections of that year. But certainly there have been not just one opinion poll, but several opinion polls that show some, some movement in the Conservatives' favour. Though we have to remember that Ruth Davidson has a big mountain to climb, so even a net gain of three seats would take them up to 18 which is just back to where they were in 1999. So to, to move beyond that and to really move to their best ever result in the Scottish Parliament um, would, would take a lot of movement. The Tories coming second in May would be a huge deal, although right now people do seem a bit more interested in the rugby. Yeah. And with us now from YouGov, the pollster Peter Kellner. Peter Kellner, um, a poll, YouGov Times poll, has the Scottish Conservatives now one point ahead of Labour, the first time since the creation of the Scottish Parliament in 1999. But it's still just one point. I mean, not much to sort of it, celebrate, is it, for the it, Tories? It's neck and neck. You know, one point is not the statistical um, difference. At the moment, I would not care to predict whether Labour or the Conservatives will come second. But the key thing is, quite clearly, the Conservatives have at least closed the gap on Labour. Whether they've overtaken Labour or not, who knows? But what we find at YouGov, in our poll last week for The Times, 
is that of people who voted Labour in last year's general election, 12%, one in eight of people who voted Labour last May, mm. now say they will vote Conservative in the Holyrood elections. So it makes me think that some of that will be true converts. Some of it will be people who I think voted tactically for Labour to try and stop the Nationalists, unsuccessfully, going back to the Conservatives. But whatever the reason, the fact that you've got a tight race between Conservative and Labour for second place is remarkable. Yes, and psychologically, it could make uh, a big difference for both Labour and the Conservatives if the Tories came in second. Mm. But as you say, statistically, um, it could be in the margin yeah. of error. I mean, to talk of a revival of the Scottish Conservatives is premature, isn't it? Well, what we've got, compared with a few years ago, is a slight revival in the Conservatives and a massive slump in Labour. It is far more Labour crashing down that has brought the two parties together. Uh, the Conservatives are up a bit. It's not massive. But isn't that the point? It's not to do with you, it's not to do with the Tories, it's to do with the poor performance of Labour. Well, we've had four polls in, in Scotland since the turn of the year by four different pollsters, so as well as, as Peter's one from YouGov, but TNS, BRMB, we've had Servation, we've had Panel Base, and every single one of them shows a record high in voting intentions. For yeah, the but how many of them actually show you're ahead of Labour? Uh, Peter's is the first yeah. crossover poll. And the only um, one, isn't and, it? Yeah. You know, and the, the system that I've set, the, the task that I've set for my team and my candidates is that irrespective of anybody else in Scottish politics, we want to have the best mm. result in a Scottish parliamentary election oh. that we as a party have had since devolution. Well, that is the test okay. for us. So how many seats, more seats, do you predict the Tories will get? Well, I'm not, I'm, I don't put a limit on it because we've got 86 more campaigning days to go and I'm working for every vote. And as the, a minimum? And the system, well, the minimum, the best we've ever had is, is 18, so I'm asking for, for more than that. But for 19 as a minimum? Well, I, yeah, but I, I, wanted, I want to do pretty well, Joe, and I think we're on course to do that. There's a, a lot of people that are changing to us, not just from Labour, but we're picking up a lot of Liberal Democrat voters as well. And there's a reason for that. We're the only of the pro-UK parties that are unashamed and unembarrassed of our role in the referendum. We're the only of the pro-UK parties that aren't saying we're going to tax every worker in Scotland more. We're going to put up the tax on people on 15 grand a year. Well, the SNP the... aren't going to either, are they? That's what they've said. Well, there's still a big divide about independence and a second referendum. We're also the only on party tax, though. that's saying that we're going to... Well, they want to put up the upper rate when that can, comes in. I, we're I, also I... the only party that are saying that we will stand firm and say there will be no second referendum in Scotland. So there's a lot of work that we've got to do ahead of the referendum, but we've got messages that are carrying to the pop population of Scotland. I just wanted to step in because Ruth Davidson, I think, is being modest here because I think <laughs> a significant part of the reason is her own leadership. In our poll for The Times, Kezia Dugdale, the new Labour leader, still has a badly negative re uh, rating. Far more people think she's doing badly than well. Ruth has a positive rating. And is now, that in, I, in spite of the party or despite well, the Tory I, party? I, it, it, I think it's despite the Conservative Party, <laughs> Ruth is reaching personally beyond the traditional Tory tribes in Scotland. And that must be a precursor to the possibility, not the certainty, but the possibility of, of gaining votes. Right. I mean, you mentioned uh, uh, an independence referendum. Um, Scottish Labour have talked about allowing their members to campaign for independence Just in that. a they future said the referendum. MSPs and MPs yeah. and all sorts. The Lib Dems too? You won't do that? No, absolutely not. We're the Conservative and Unionist Party. Right. It Certainly won't limit your potential... I mean, but looking at the, you know, the way the SNP have been storming ahead, won't that limit your potential potential voting pool? Well, to be honest, I care more about the country than I care about the Conservative Party. I stood for two years and fought to keep our country together. And so I you don't want do those again. voters? You wouldn't want to appeal to those voters? I you? want to appeal to those voters to keep the country together, and that's the arguments that I'll be making, is that we're better off as part of the UK, and the UK is better off with us as a part. But how do you counter the fact that one Conservative MP was sent to Westminster at last May's elections? I mean, it, it must be clear to you that David Cameron is still a toxic brand for you north of the border. Well, do you know what that says to me? Let's work harder and let's get more Tory MPs in at the next election in 2020. And the reason, the way that you do that is you start rebuilding the party. I'm trying to take our party from our worst ever election result in a Holyrood election before I became leader to our best ever result in one parliamentary term. And we're on course to do it. Right. And we're on course to beat the Labour Party, potentially, I, for the I, first time in 30 years. You said she was being modest. That doesn't sound that modest. No, 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 I, I was, I was, as were the other half, I'd like to ask Ruth a question arising mm. out of her research. Do you think the Scottish Conservatives need to have a different, perhaps more generous policy on, on welfare than in England? Because the bad news in our poll is that the Scots, unlike the English, English are quite content to see taxes rise in order to have more on public more spend on public services, more spent on mm. welfare. Do you see 
your party moving to a slightly more left-wing position on these issues than the English party, because the Scottish voters are more left-wing on these issues than the English voters. Well, I think we're about to put that to an electoral test in 85 days, 86 days' time, mm. because there's going to be two parties going in saying we're not going to put up your taxes, and two parties going in saying we are going to put up all of your taxes, and we'll see which way the voters jump. But I would suggest that the SNP and the Conservatives may have a better election than the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats, both of whom say they're going to put up tax on every worker in Scotland. I want to protect people's paychecks. But, but in terms of welfare, that's the question. Do you think and do you differ from the Conservatives at Westminster, from David Cameron and George Osborne? Well, you've, you've already mentioned at times that I've spoken out, for example, yes. on tax so, yes. credits. I think that there's ways in which you can look at the offer there. but. Let's not forget that in the Scottish Social Attitudes Survey, which is the gold standard mm. for, for research into public attitudes, things like the benefit cap is more popular in Scotland than it is in the rest of the UK. So it's a really mixed picture on that. Are you still damaged, though, by association with the Westminster wing of your party? Well, you know, I'm a Conservative and Unionist. It's the party I joined, it's the party I sure. believe in. But I, I are you damaged the by the images of David Cameron and George Osborne? I don't think that we are, and I think if you look at the, the, the poll um, there, there were more people that think the Prime Minister is doing a good job in Scotland mm. uh, than currently say that they're indicating they're going to vote for the Conservative Party. So, right. Are you, you know, happy to campaign with him, have him campaigning with you? Well, you'll see him up in Scotland very soon. We had him up two weeks ago for the, the Aberdeen City deal, so I don't think there's any problems there at all. But this is a Holyrood election, and people understand sure. that it's about who's going to take on Nicola Sturgeon. And I think yes. that you know the Labour Party, in nine years as the official opposition, haven't laid a glove on the SNP and something in Scotland needs to change and if the voters in Scotland don't change the government I think they should change the opposition. So why is the term Tory still really a term of abuse for so many people in Scotland? The SNP accused Labour of being red Tories and Labour <laughs> calls the SNP tartan Tories. I mean you know what is it? Well I think that why do you think opposition parties in a zero-come game of an election, a zero-sum game of an election, uh, use Tory as some form of, of abuse. It's because they're opposition parties, because we're all in competition against each other. You know, I, I don't think that I use the words, uh, you know, separatists uh, as, a, mm -hmm. as an idea that's, that's somehow mm -hmm. good. I mean, that's, that's kind of what you do in politics, isn't it? And I don't think that's just Scotland that that's used at. I think that's used down here as well. Look at the momentum well, th following anybody within the Labour Party at Tory. At the well, uh, well, but that is the point <laughs> in case, isn't it? It's a sort of deflection tactic. I mean, why is um, and continues to be Toryism a, a sort of a, a term of abuse for so many people? Oh, I think you know, this is his historic roots. Still? Still. Well, 40, 50 years ago, the Conservatives were the biggest party in Scotland. Indeed, there was a period when I was a young lad, many, many decades ago, when the Conservatives were more popular in Scotland than they were in England. And that crashed away. Um, in the 1970s and 1980s. You know, Margaret Thatcher was unpopular. The poll tax came first to Scotland before England. And I think a lot of Scots still feel not just strongly about the poll tax, but about how Scotland was used as a laboratory by a right wing London government. So there's a lot of baggage. And I think, we're, you know, if the Conservatives come second in Scotland in May, it'll be with 20 or 21 per cent. It's still only 20 or 21 per cent. It's not 30, 35 or 40 per cent. There's a long way to go for the Conservatives to go back to where they were when I was growing up. Peter Kellner, thank you.